I would be among the first to admit that we made mistakes in government. I will be among the first to admit that there was corruption within previous Antigua Labour Party administrations. But I have to admit that the corruption that exists today under the UPP regime makes corruption under the previous ALP administration child's play, my dear people. I mean, this thing is explosive. There will be no job losses under the Labour Party administration. While there's moonlight and music and love and romance I now turn let's face to the water shortage that has plagued this country for some time And I say to you tonight that Before leadership matters I say to you tonight the that the water shortage that our people have been experiencing is an issue that belongs to a different age. And I say too, that we have made positive steps in order to resolve the water problem. And I guarantee you that within 14 days, there will be increased water supply in this country. Let's face music and dance. A cornerstone of our general election campaign was the provision of affordable housing. Indeed, we promised 500 homes in 500 days. And we said to you that you would have gotten 500 homes in 500 days. Those with little or no vision said that it could not be done. Well, as your Prime Minister, I said to you that it can be done and that it shall be done. Let's face the music and dance. Let's face the music and dance. I mean, this thing is explosive. True Labor Talks with your host, the executive of the Antigua Barbuda True Labor Party. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Veer Cornwall Bird, the third candidate in the constituency of St. John's Rural South at the next election, which will be heard on the 21st of March 2018. I'm in studio with Lionel Nedwell, and there are lots of issues that we want to discuss with you to let you be aware of what is happening in your constituency before you go and mark it like for who you want to represent you. Lionel, say hello to the public. Yes, good afternoon, general public. It's so nice to be here with you again today. It's always great because to come and give you the information that's going to benefit your life and benefit mine, same how, you know, makes me feel good doing that. So we are here today that we are going to give you some the necessary information that will assist you, that when you go to the poll, you're going to make some real sober decisions and do the things that you have to do to better your life, to better your children and your grandchildren's lives. So ladies and gentlemen, you just stay tuned with us and we will be giving you the full scoop of what's going on in your constituency and um, have a great uh, time with us today. Yeah, well, we usually start off with the constituency of St. John's Rural South, where I'll be running. Mm -hmm. um, we had a decent day campaigning on Monday. Tuesday was exceptional also. We planned to go a little further on Saturday. However, the incremental weather, it was raining, it was pouring, it stopped, sun came out, and we just wasn't certain. So we didn't get too much housing done as we planned to on Saturday, mm -hmm. but um, the people that we met, I mean, the election is in the air, and overall they seem confused. 
One of the things we heard on the campaign trail was why are they calling the election so early? One woman actually said she wasn't willing to go out to vote yeah. because they called the election early and she's not ready for it. She even didn't even want to give me her name <laughs> because she, she don't know because the election was early. Yeah. And that is what I really wanted to get out to the electorate. This early election wasn't to call, catch the political parties flat-footed. It was to catch the electorate flat-footed. It was that design so those who aren't on the list um, to registered in that constituency by the 31st of January, they cannot vote in whatever constituency they live in presently. It was mm -hmm. designed for that people who are accustomed to voting every five years or so will... <laughs> I know there's some people who mm -hmm. probably um, have tickets to leave the island and doing things around the time, family coming into Antigua and so on for early spring or so on, they've been caught uh, flat-footed. And that is what we're hearing out here. I'm hearing also that some people, the, the, the Labour Party, from die-hard loyal Labour Party's families, they are not voting because they felt that they have been left out of this whole new Labour, corrupt Labour nonsense, is that their families have served and supported, but they feel that they have all these other people coming over now who are lead in the driver's seat. So several people tell me that they're not going to vote, and I believe it's just they're disenchanted with the corrupt Labour Party, and those who also said they're not going to vote is just that it was designed to Frustrate. keep the mm -hmm. people who go to cast the vote to a low number. Mm -hmm. Usually, not well when they have a low turnout, that means that the incumbent will retain yeah, yeah. government, mm -hmm. and that is what I believe with this early election because. People are just getting off of Christmas, they have bills, they have these, and so they're not really thinking about the election outside of the election year. When Papa Bird called the early election 1980, mm -hmm. four year, a, a year early, it was a time where the electorate was very um, what do you call it, radicalized. They okay. had a message that they were going to free themselves from the colonial powers the mm -hmm. following year. They are having the, court, the talks with Papa Bird going up to discuss our political independence in the United Kingdom. So the general electorate was abuzz yeah. and wanted to was show their for, approval yeah, was for what was forward. taking place. Wanted it. So that is why they held, held the election yeah, early, because you know, they had the, the electorate's attention. Yeah, then in addition to that, they had an early election in 1984. And the reason being, too, you just came out of independence. There was that buzz in the air. Um, the, the main opposition at the time, the PLM, was divided. Um, George Water had formed his other party, the UPM. And there was a discord amongst the opposition, which okay. led them to call an early election. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe that the Prime Minister is trying the same thing because he feels that the DNA has divided the UPP vote. Whether it has or not, I am not certain. I don't believe it has in all the seats because there's no way you can tell me Somebody who is running for the first time, doesn't have any na a national name, hasn't been campaigning for even two months, yeah, is going to upset. wipe out incumbent no. and no. main opposition. No upset there. So I believe DNA really, it would be Joanne Messiah who mm -hmm. would have some impact mm -hmm. out there in All Saints, East and St. Louis, as in pulling away UPP supporters' votes from the United Progressive Party. I don't see that in any other constituency that they're running candidates too little too late, too late. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that we're just saying that the people in St. John's Rural South where I am concerned you will see me you will hear me on the loudspeakers we're still trying to get data because we believe that the people are so heightened politically at this point in time that we let them know that we're out there and that we'll easier give us their name and all the information to build our database in areas that we have not uh, canvassed um, on 100% and, well. mm -hmm. and that we need to. So, mm -hmm. Nedwell, um, that is the way I look for it in St. John's Rural South. Yeah. Uh, we have our shirts. We were mm -hmm. not um, caught flat-footed in St. John's Rural South. Not at South, all, man. But We've I do believe there. the main opposition, mm -hmm. the UPP, are a little flat in the constituency because mm -hmm. we are out there campaigning, we are out there on our loudspeakers and we seen, don't see any seen, no, UPP, UPP resistance. shot, shoe, nothing. bag, not umbrella, mm -hmm. nothing. Nothing. You know, and it's just it amazing that. that you guys want to take office. In order to, to be the man, you have to beat the man. Mm -hmm. Remember Ric Flair used to say that? Yep. WWE <laughs> wrestling. And I can't believe this is what has happened. But anyway, 
I was telling somebody um, when we were going on yesterday, wait, he looked like true labor, the only opposition to help you out here <laughs> in rural south right now. Where's UBB? Where's DNA? Oh, Lord. Yeah, there's DNA and all. Missing yeah, in action. Yeah, that's missing, missing in action. action. Or DOA. <laughs> Dead on arrival. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, let us say a few words on the campaign, man. There is a lot of frustration out there. The people are just frustrated. Uh, we hear it all the time. We are going out there and there's a talk about uh, ALP. Persons who are diehard ALP members are now, you know, saying things that we, we can't even believe they're saying. I remember when we go on Big Creek there, we saw that young guy, mm -hmm. you know, and he was telling us, look, hey, man, no more of this stuff. We can't take no more. That guy used to eat and sleep ALP. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I just wonder what's going on in terms of what people are frustrated and we can see that. And that front that the ALP is putting up and behaving like everything is kosher, everything is uh, under up and up, everything is good. It's not like that at all. No, mm. not, that's not what we are hearing when we go out there. Uh, we are in that constituency, um, whole south, and you know, that was Tico Lake's constituency. Mm. Yeah. And there's still a lot of queries and a lot of qualms about, you know, what had happened to good old Tico and stuff like that. The, the candidates for that are now running, which is the one for ALP, the cousin of the one that's running for UPP. Comrade UPP. Yeah, okay, Comrade UPP. It's like they're just yeah. doing themselves a favor. I don't know. They're not saying nothing about one another. It's a kind of silent campaign you know, going the way, on over The way there. I look at the campaign uh, between Dara Matthew and Kyron Simon, hmm. two first cousins, hmm. Remember back in the day, they had a man by the name of Cassius Clay. Yes, Cassius Eventually Clay. came Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Ali. Died about a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah, very right there. You know, he was a beautiful specimen of a man physique-wise. Oh, yes. But when he was in the ring, he put on a show. It wasn't a boxing match, no. It was yeah, entertainment. That's so true. And one of the things I remember he was famous for doing is uh -huh. like when he was on the street, uh -huh. He would do the shadow boxing, like yes, 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 in yes. front of him, and he like oh, you mean, oh, you mean, put cross their the face and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I'm seeing from Kyron yeah. and uh, Matthew. Yeah, they, they show him bloat in the ear. Yeah. It looks good, but not yeah. not a damn thing happening. No, 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 no blow connected to the that's face, so not body, the head, nothing. So that is what I am seeing out there, and um, they're looking flat. Yeah, very flat. The, 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 very, the UPP very is looking flat. very flat on what I, they're I, able to throw at their happened, political opponent. Yeah. I don't know if it's because it's a family member and you don't want to mash too, it yeah, toes, yeah, too But hard. I will certainly mash Daryl Matthew and Kyron Simon show. Yeah, well, we become becoming different. This That's right. We're becoming different. We won't be as polite and as, as gentle. Yeah, uh, that's what is, yeah, it's what uh, the nonsense is. going on. Okay. Yeah, man, this, this is, is a game playing. competition, you know, where the best man wins. Of course, we picked it up, you know, during the the the, the, the season there when they nominated and when they put up their candidates, because we realized that that Kyron was uh, campaigning for his uh, no no Daryl was campaigning for Kyron. Yeah, you know, and and all that, and we just wondering, well, how does that work? But now we are seeing it. We are now going through the whole process, and it appears as until election, they'll be quite quiet between one another. A lot of quietness, and and, and you know, they they not saying nothing about one another. It's a silent campaigning, I would call it. They're just campaigning silently against one another. And we just do hope that the people are looking, the people are realizing what's been going on. Because when things like this happen, you know you've been taken to the cleaners. Yeah. You know that there's no, no, no hope of no real representation. It's just going in there and there'll be a lot of games playing and all that. We don't need that anymore. And the people now have a choice. They have a real choice. Is there's four different candidates running in that constituency? Well, one, you know, DNA, there's not really too much, but I'm not going to say much about that. I don't want to knock anybody a kind of a how. But the DNA, she's a newcomer, she's a trainee, and she's all that. She needs to get some more experience before she actually, you know, want to throw a hat in the ring like this. We have the true Labour Party, we have Rear Bird, seasoned politician and all that, the green political science and and on you know, so forth. He has experience in this whole going on and he's well motivated, he's on the radio all the time telling you what's going on and then, you know, just rebutting what's other things that's not necessary to be out there and all that. So 
Then we have the other two candidates, that, that the cousin business and all that. The, the choice is clear, you know, I can see that. There's a clear choice out there if you're looking for representation. Because then there's only one man out there that appears as if he will represent you and give you the type of representation that you deserve. So, ladies and gentlemen, you just look at this carefully, and then you, you know, as I said, when you go to the polls, you make some sober decisions. And eventually, man, we all will get through this whole thing. You know, you will do the right thing, and we'll be right there, footing it beside you. So, great things will happen. And um, we just do hope that that's what you do when you get to the poll on election day. So well said, Neville. So yeah. well said. Um, yes, yeah, so Monday, the 5th of March, is the date for nominations. Um, you need to have 10 electors from the constituency come forward and nominate you on nomination day. Um, the, there's the proposer, who's the first one that says, I'm going to nominate that's me that's as the, the candidate. Mm -hmm. Then there's, there's the seconder, that's who will second that mm -hmm. motion. Then, that's and right. then you'll have the eight, eight other, other that's right, individual um, electors service. who nominate you. Mm -hmm. So in a total, ten you that's need. Right. Mm -hmm. And the purpose for this whole procedure is basically to a formality. Because if you don't have a procedure to elect somebody as the or to, to nominate somebody to be the candidate, anybody could just go up and say Moan be on the list, Moan for being candidate. Yeah, right. So you have a, a process where at least ten electors have to, to, Think that you to nominate you to be on the list. Yeah. And then you have to in addition to that sign off and say yes mm -hmm. that you um the they can't just nominate you and you are a candidate, you know, you have to at least consent to it. Yes, that's so that's a way I have to sign also. Mm -hmm. and let people know that I want to accept the nomination. Yes, sir. And then after that, you have to pay your $500 um, easy mm -hmm. to be the candidate. And that's a formality. If you get one-eighth of the vote of the electorate, you'll get back your money. Failing to do that, then you don't get back your funds. Money is for it's something to take in mind so that people won't just go forward and make a joke of right. being a candidate. That's right. um, we are going to do that tomorrow at Bud Golden Grove Primary School. Um, getting in there, the process is from 8 to 6, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. We want to mm -hmm. get in there as early as possible and deal with that. Okay, and put that beside back. us after so that we can get back to really going house to house yes, campaigning, gathering thing. data, get on our loudspeakers, convince thing. people and to, to shape people's minds what our plan is for St. John's Rural South. Mm -hmm. It is a necessity, it needs to be done, and we are moving forward from here to do something to improve the lot of the people's lives in St. John's Rural South mm -hmm. and in Antigua and Barbuda as a whole. Mm -hmm. Ned, will you have anything else to say yes, on yeah, this yes. first, talk, first yeah, area? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you talk about improving people's life in rural South, and that is something that hasn't been done in so long. Mm -hmm. You know, all those other parties that got into power from PLM come right through, uh, two-time ALP after that and UPP. And they, nothing happened for the people in rural South. You know, their lives haven't been, you know, improved in any, and all that. So we do hope to make that particular change when we do get into power. You know, we'll be looking dead and, and serious at the people in rural South, and they will be the priority, and all that. And we already told you that. We told you that why. That's why we are actually making our community center a priority, mm -hmm. because we want to have a place where people can meet, they can come and, and share their experiences and make suggestions with one another, know what's going on in your community, know if there are any jobs available, and all that good stuff can take place in, our, in, in the community center. And this is why we are making the, the, our community center a priority and not going out there trying to full slate and all that and the next thing you know you know nothing great can come out of that because then um, a lot of these people that they get to full their slate they're rookie they're rookie politicians they know nothing about politics it's a sort of on the job training for them and they go out there and some of them take you know they 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 learn the other way before they learn the right way and you know mm -hmm. what other way i'm talking about yeah they yeah. have to fill their pockets and all that and they prefer that they you know so we need people that are experienced in politics that knows what politics is all about and why they are going there and they say they're going to represent people and do intend to represent the people 
and not just people who are going in there trying to learn the profession and at the same time trying to make themselves wealthy and all that. We don't need that anymore in our, poli in our um, political going-ons. We need proper representation, and this is what we are offering the people. We are going out there to represent you. We know how to represent you. A lot of these people, they don't even know what that is because there's just is that, as we put it, wash your foot and come. You know, mm -hmm. have to have no kind of great experience, know what it's all about, what it takes, so much work you're going to have to put into this. It's none of that stuff. You go in there and you're rookie. And you, you, you know, you, you're contented in learning on the job as you, as you learn as you go on and all that. But at the same time, the people suffer, you know, and we don't want to have that anymore. We want to have proper representation from the start to finish. As long as you get in there, you can represent the people. And that's what we are offering the people for the true Labour Party. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you there? Yeah, I'm right here, man. Okay, um, so I want to make sure. I just was thinking of something of um, uh -huh. some of the electors we have to go and see up in Radio Range, you know. Okay. It's yeah. such a large um, constituency, mm -hmm. so I was just thinking about them. So, yeah, I'm listening to you, man. Okay, man, man, okay. Just making sure. Who right. had to get out the shirts and so too. You know? uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a constant things, but... um, thing in your mind. Who do I meet? Oh, you yes. wonder if anybody's going to be offended yes, if yes. they don't get a shirt. I know and all that. I know me can't get a shirt and people in the backy. So, yeah, my mind was up in Radio Range, man. Okay, great. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm. I'm on the campaign chain. I yes, I realized that. I was on yeah. track. Yes, right. That's, that's right. That's right. Yes, yes ladies and gentlemen, um, let's just get out to the, 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 the campaign for rural South and let's just deal with the issues that we have at hand. It appears to us as if the Labour Party, from what we're seeing in their campaign, I mean, Thursday we saw them up at Kentish road there just going over to nut grove mm -hmm. and they had on all their paraphernalia ah, yeah, and well going climbed. down the road well hammering climbed. in yeah, their their posters and yeah. their pictures of yeah. their candidate comrade upp going down tinder yeah. road yeah. and one of the things you notice is right. that their loudspeakers are not the, the the loudspeakers to speak or the ones that you play audio clips from their speakers are more the ones that you get um, mid-range and bass. But they are intending to really have a party yeah. where they want yeah. music on mm -hmm. their in their car, mobile parties. Yes, so they don't, add to me, in my opinion, Nedwell, yeah. they're not campaigning on the issues. No, 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 no. no. It is no, about we, we a see party. That. Yeah. It is about yeah. ham and turkey. Yeah. And a feel-good spirit. Keep you happy. Keep you happy. Time in yeah. and yeah. Keep you happy with the um, stuff. They are celebrating what they think has been a success the last three and three quarters years, but the general public, the electorate, I cannot see how they are satisfied with how no, their livelihood, suffering. their um, possibilities, or ease of getting a job stands in that's right, uplifting themselves that's right. that is a bread and butter issue mm -hmm. which i do not believe this political organization has addressed that's this is an organization that told people to dust off their tools no. but then the carpenters the contractors the plumbers the electricians start to dust off your tubes tools tools because those were coming and it's like something you can't tell them to dust off the tools and after three and three quarters years you still Still having people waiting for work. Right. One of the main things you heard from the whole campaign trail was that in 2014 was that they know how to get people back to work. And even now, towards the end of the, the campaign now, there's two, ha two weeks left, you can see all the projects, they're fixing the roads, they're clearing a lot of bush, they're putting up their posters up here in um, just above Piggott's, we see that they have these foundations that are going up for the 500 house. So they're trying to give you work. But I'm asking the electorate, yes, you may have some money in your pocket now. And that is a good thing. But remember, after the 21st of March, and you give them that X, they don't need you anymore. I am certain will be... Side let line. go from that work. Sidelined. Yeah, you will be sidelined. Side Those projects aren't going to be completed. They are waiting just to get through the 21st so that they can be reelected. Then they're going to have to slow down those projects because they don't have the money in Antigua and Barbuda to pay these workers. We heard the same thing over there in Barbuda where they said some of the, the, the workers over there that's supposed to be building up the infrastructure over there haven't been paid. 
and they are already picketing and in protest. Mm -hmm. So that is what I believe will happen over here in the constituencies. They're giving people work just to get them to go to the polls and vote. In addition to that, Nedwell, yeah. you notice that um, the Rastafarian community were promised at the end of last year, going into January, yeah. that they're going to change the law, amend the law, so that um, marijuana is um, decriminalized. Mm -hmm. But we're now the first week of March, yeah, and nothing. The, I think the last thing I heard, he was supposed to go to the upper house, the Senate. Yes. And I could have swear I heard that it was approved. Yeah, I think I heard but that. But now I'm well. here in the, um, one of my um, electors in St. John's Road South was telling me that the police came and harassed him. And they're telling them that the law hasn't passed as yet. Mm -hmm. So I am just wondering, Nedwell, if that isn't a political gimmick. Yeah, it appears so. Yeah, yeah. and I thought so from start there. And when I heard that, that, you know, they're taking so long and realized that, you know, that nothing was happening, I, it convinced me that it's a political gimmick. I want yeah. to believe that after the election, there will a lot of um, consideration have to go back into this thing, and we're going to have to go and have a lot of more discussion before we can, you know, all that can be said there. Yeah? And, mm -hmm. you know, so they have to put it back off until all this is being done, and that's maybe it will take another four and a half years, yeah. getting close to the next year. We know how they do things there. And we see this time and time again. And this is what I know the general public see what's happening. So if you see what's happening and you decide that, that this is the way you want to go, it means that you love it. So then I don't understand where that right after the election you have some people, boy, water, more than flour mm. and all this good thing. Boy. This, no, you had the power a few days ago. You could have made a difference. You could have made all these things that you're crying about stop happening. Yeah. So when you behave like you love what's going on, you even cuss for it. Some of them down there cursing. And you know and and your your shoes and they curse like anything. Even on Glasses. Facebook, yeah, man, you see all the comments, you see the rebuttals, the cursing, man, and the, the, some get so hostile and all that. You know, this is what's going on, and we need to stop playing that particular game. That's a game that's been hurting you for a number of years, and if you continue to do that, your child now is going to get hurt, and your child's child, your, your, your grandchildren are going to get hurt. So you have to stop playing that game and do the right thing that will get some sort of upliftment for you within your daily lives, within the going on. Right now, this is not happening because what? They are playing you for fools. They are playing you that you are going to be out there and they're going to come just before the election and promise you something, pass out some little uh, minister. Minister, you know, something to you oh, and, and, and that's going to satisfy you. No, Vera, this, this is something that's been doing over and over again, and the same results has been coming about. Mm. We can't continue to do this. And I was asking the general public, my, my good people, to stop playing this political game that you're playing, and this red and blue and all this, and don't even look at our colors. Just look at what we have to offer. Look at who, who we put up to represent you and see if that, that's a capable person of representing you. And if you think that he will represent you the way how he carries himself over the years and the way how we go on the radio and will rebut and say these things within the orchestra, um, that, that will benefit you down the road. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, you know, I'm asking you one more time, just don't go and play that same old political game because the same result is going to come about about and we are going to hurt be hurt from it down the road yeah so well said well yeah. so well said um as i said we're trying to touch the flesh meet as many people in the constituency and listen to our message i know our message can can be drowned out with all the large crowds and loudspeakers and general mood or something yeah. festival yeah. but i i would just like people of st john's rose so to be aware mm -hmm. you are the most deprived consistency in antigua and barbuda mm -hmm. you have no government buildings to provide you with public services to improve your life as i've said before i am certain if they did statistics with, with rural south and any other constituency in Antigua and Barbuda, 
they will find that the quality of life index, the life expectancy index, the birth rate is lower than the other constituencies. For what we see on a weekly basis in St. John's Rural South, where you have no community center, no health center, no hurricane shelter, no fire station, no police station, no representation. After so many years, these things have impacted this community. And the people, they are to be blamed to some extent because when they pay the party politics, you, the constituents, the people who inhabit this constituency, are the ones who suffer. Yeah, not Mr. Sorry. Darrell Matthew, not, not Mr. Kyron Simon. Simon. You, you are the one that is suffering because they are not even going to talk about this. What is the state of the living standard of people in this constituency when you can't get your sidewalks clean? When only now because there's election you see they are fixing roads. What about the condition with the hurricane shelter when we face two hurricane, category five hurricanes of September? And the hurricane season starts in June, and you don't hear anything from the two major political organizations about finding adequate shelter for the people in that constituency. That's a concern for us. That is why we said our community center is going to double as a hurricane shelter. You know, Nedwa? These are the things that I believe that people who are going to elect individuals need to be discussing in their community, inside their family, in, in the greater constituency of St. John's Rural South. How come nobody is, is discussing this? But you're going to wait until the government says a Category 5 hurricane is coming to Antigua and Barbuda and all those who live in not go from go go if you need shelter go down to the gold and grow primary school which i do not see how that is going to survive a category four or five hurricane that's right 60 i don't even know how it got like this because time's gone by this is when people used to think rationally and all these things that were thought out prior to what's going on and what's going to happen Nowadays is so different. You know, party politics has gotten so deep that even for your safety, you're not even too concerned. You know, and this is a dreadful thing that's happening within our society. You can't do that. You can't make party politics this make you decide, well, look, me go risk my life in some little foolishness in a, in a 60 year old building. When I was a child going to school, I went to the, the Golden Grove Primary School, you know, and that, that, that there was nothing that's been done to that structure ever since. So when that category five or four hurricane come through, I know it's not going to be a pleasant sight, you know, and when you go down there and behave like you're safe and well safe, ladies and gentlemen, you could not be more safe than if you go into a new building, a building that we decide and we told you that we are going to put there that you can use in many ways. You know, it's going to be like a multi-purpose building. Mm -hmm. You're going to come there and you're going to better your lives. You're going to come there. You're going to talk about our, um, the constituency allowance, how you want what it we to can be do spent. It, and how we're going to grow it. How, how right. we're going to put it in a bank put account with, with that interest that being stuff. accrued every month. All that good stuff. You know, this is something that we are planning from scratch. And we plan to take you there until your life is being uplifted. So then when you just decide to go back into that, that old way of doing things. This is what's hurting you. Yeah. And this is what I do not understand, uh, you know, that you know that something is hurting you and you deliberately will go down that road. You will defend it to the bone. And you see is nothing to defend. Now we, the election is coming about. You see all them grand billboard is going up and all them things there. I see a billboard that it has about four or five different sections. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a huge thing. That's a lot of wood that they're using and just putting up, but it happens every election. You know, these are the things that they do to confuse you, and people, we call it mama guy. They mama guy you over the years, and you still swallowing all this good stuff. We can't go about and continue to do it like that. You know, you can see them on the billboard, but what happened after that? The billboards, come, they take them down, and then right after that, you don't see the politician. You don't hear about And this is why we are campaigning. This is something that we hear constantly. Who are you? Yeah. 
You know, we didn't see that. And we haven't seen this. I mean, it's, and nothing happened since. And he never come back and say nothing and all the things, you know. But yet still, when time come to vote, you will decide to vote party line. Ladies and gentlemen, no, that's unheard of. It's not, you know, this can't be tolerated anymore. Other people's lives are being messed up because of that process. Yeah. Yeah. You have people out there that, that go out there and they, they think rationally and they vote the way that they're supposed to vote, their conscience. They see what's going on within their community and they decide, hey, I'm going to go with my conscience and I'm going to do, do the right thing and sooner or later it will pay off. But then you're being opposed by people who decide, hey, hand out the best thing for me now. Me can take some hand out and, and, you know, and all that. And even though it doesn't last you any time, you just seem as if for the moment, you're just glad for, so glad for the moment that you go and you do these nonsense. No, it can't be done like that anymore, ladies and gentlemen. We're asking you, politely asking you to please just go out there and do, look at your conscience, see what's happening. Know how you want what and what direction you want your life to go in and vote accordingly. Yeah. And they, I don't see that, they, you know, it's so difficult in doing that. But yeah, the there's nothing difficult in doing that, but there's so much that people believe that if they do the easier thing, that is what, the option of doing the easier thing, mm -hmm. it is easy for them to close their eyes and leave it up to a party that has been in existence for nearly 50 years and believe in some way, shape or form that their hopes and dreams of providing work to their family or to build a house or to purchase a piece of land is going to be fulfilled. Maybe they never heard of Einstein. Yeah, yeah. But you see what happened? Um, one of the best definitions of what is happening in Antigua and Barbuda is what Einstein said. Um, he said the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. You are doing the same thing, voting for ALP and UPP for almost the last 50 years. Well, the successor, um, the predecessor to the UPP, the, the PLM. And you have nothing to show for it. Presently in that consistency, as I mentioned, there is no hurricane shelter. When it comes to your health, when it comes to watching and taking um, a test to see getting your your blood pressure read you know mm -hmm. yeah when it comes mm -hmm. to, to you to go in there and get some prenatal care where yeah. do you go <laughs> if you break your leg you're supposed to have a community center where they could set the leg and treat you instead of having to go to mount st john's yeah. that's not for rural south yeah. when a hurricane comes they're telling you to use a building that is 60 70 years old mm -hmm. and there's no way that nods can convince me that Golden Grove Primary, Primary School, School can withstand a hurricane that is Category 5. No way. And that no, is what no we way. are talking about. Too old for that. Really. And if they, not even too, too, too old, it just wasn't designed to face down those sort of hurricanes. Yeah, the shock itself is yeah. before yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. After that, 60, that, that, if anybody's going down there to shelter for a hurricane 5, Mm -hmm. I mean, that may be the graveyard. Yeah, could that be. That may be their last resting place. It's and a I'm possibility. People, the electors in St. John's Rural so South, when they come around to you and tell you they want your support, and you feel that your family member has voted for them, and your mother, and your grandmother, and your great aunt, ask them one simple question. Mr. Darrell Matthew, we are now in March. You're asking me to vote for you on the 21st of March. Hurricane season is in June. What are you doing to make certain that me, my family, my neighbor, my other constituents are going to be safe facing down a Category 5 hurricane? What is the plan? Are you going to build another community center or hurricane shelter like we are trying to do? I haven't heard of it. No. I haven't heard any of that, any, any of that being, being put forward. Nedwell. Not at all. Have you heard not what, what they're going to do for the constituency? No, not a thing. They haven't been saying anything. But what I do know that when Tico Lake uh, was uh, in the, the helm of, of this whole thing, Dal Matthew claims that he was somewhere close by in the background there, assisting Tico Lake in doing the things that he was doing. Winston Williams. Winston Williams, I'm sorry. Yeah, Winston yeah. Williams at that time. Now he comes out and he's going to um, 
uh, pick up for Tico Lake, who did just as poor as Winston, because he said that he was going to complete the community center, and we thought that you would have been the right person to do it, knowing that he is the Minister of Works and all that. So I thought that it was going to be get done. So, you know, we had this, uh, this whole complicated way of how them trying to confuse the electorate. It's, it's crazy way. They, they promise you all these things and they end up doing nothing. You know, look at Tico Lake in particular. He has been missing in action. The people tell us that. Every time we go out there, they're saying, hey, we haven't seen Tico Lake since. Some even didn't see him during the election. They just heard and they still decide to vote for him. And then after the election, that was it. You know, he, had, he don't even show up. He had nothing to say to the general public and his, his, his electorate. So these are the things that's been happening. This is the misrepresentation that you've been getting or the no representation that you've been getting. And I can't believe that people will decide that, you know, it, this is acceptable. It's far from being acceptable. This is, we, you know, we are not talking about a boys' club, you know. We are talking about a group of men who you elect to run your life for you. This is what is going on. And they are not doing anything close to that. They are taking care of themselves. And then they say, um, oh, we go past and christen them picnic for us and all yeah. them kind of something. So they make sure that they are well taken care of before they even look back at you. And at this point in time, it seems as if they want to look back at you because they're asking you to go into a next election without fulfilling the promises that they promised you. So they don't have to look back. If you go and decide two weeks down the road that, hey, I'm going to put these guys back in power, the same thing is going to happen to you. And they don't have to look back again until five years down the road. And when they look back, it's just to ask you, hey, you know, you're playing the game. Let's just do the same thing. So we, we can't accept that view. We are going out there. We are telling the people what the alternative to this is. Yeah, and yeah. we are trying to assist them. And, and we are walking step by step with them. And we are, we build, actually, we are actually building at this time too. We are building our, our organization. And we are asking you to build that new concept of how you decide that you are going to vote. To benefit your life. For the upliftment of your child and your grandchildren and all that down the road. And this is where we are going with you. We are not, not necessarily offer except a proper living down the road. These guys, you know what, they, how they operate and they accumulate a lot of money. Over, and now they're trying to substitute you getting a better life down the road with a few dollars just before the election. You can't accept it. I know you better than this. I, look, I lived in the United States there for quite a while and I used to come home every year. I will mm -hmm. come home to these people. And these are the people that used to think rationally. Christmas, when you come home, it was such a nice, you know, atmosphere. Everybody looking, but people coming, knocking at your door, singing and all that. We used to be one group of people. And then the people that really think and looking out and want to be the best at what they do and all that and accomplish from that. No, it's not what you can do, but it's who you know. And, and, and the friendship and all that, you know, that get you into a position that will do something for you. We don't want that. You go to school and you, you go get all this education and you set your program. To, this is what it's going to be. And then because this man doesn't know you too well, it doesn't work out. It is not right because you're yeah. qualified and you should be given the opportunity. So these are the things that's ailing the society at this particular time. And this is what you have to look about. And this is what you have to put a stop to. And let's just try and do it together. As I say, we are building and build with us. And let's go forward and I'll make some sort of upliftment in our lives. Yeah, Nedwell, I'm looking at um, mm -hmm. Comrade UPP. Uh, <laughs> hey, man. Hey. Daryl S. Matthew. Yeah, man. St. John's Rural South Service oh, yes. to our country, service to you. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what he says on the first page. I guess this is to hold the young people. Yeah. St. John's Rural South plans to the constituency. Mm -hmm. Upgrade and maintain sporting facilities in the constituency. <laughs> they did that. Winston, Winston Williams, Williams said the same thing. thing. Yeah, they did that and nothing happened. Eustace Tico Lake said the same thing. Yeah, everything half eyes. No Ensure the St. John's Rural South becomes a constituency mm -hmm. of sporting excellence mm -hmm. by establishing new sporting teams and clubs while supporting existing ones. Mm -hmm. 
So you're going to maintain the facility on the Golden Grove playing field. Ain't that something? Right? All right. They said it before. That's very, That's very easy, easy to say that. They need to because finish the building your first. Mm -hmm. Winston Williams and Eustace Tico, they said the same thing. Yeah. Why would the electorate believe you? Mm -hmm. Why Your party is not even you enough. People say they, they vote for party. Mm -hmm. And if that was what Eustace Tico Lake said, that is a reflection on the party. Mm -hmm. Tell me what Eustace Lake, what has been done when you said that you're going to finish the Golden Grove Community Centre and then you're going to have to actually have after school program who you wanted more people, the young men, to come yeah, around this community centre. Right. What, what happened? He said that. You are the Minister of Works. Mm -hmm. You are the representative of the Antigua Barbie, the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. Now, this other one now, Comrade UPP, is saying he will do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fi almost 15 years now. One, one term for Winston Williams and 10 for for Eustace T. Lake. Although right. his time get cut a little bit by two years. Yeah, that's right. You understand? Yeah. Build community, community involvement by establishing the St. John's Rural South Sports Day with different communities, Red Range, Upper Otters, Lower Otters, Go to Go, and Not Roof. Oh, We're competing man. different sporting activities. Can you imagine? Oh, how nice. Yeah, On what? That's what they. What feel? We see yeah. them there, they have the, the basketball court, they actually put asphalt yes, on Yes, it's the a basketball court. Them. I don't want to hear nobody fall up on asphalt. Oh, gosh, they can this do a lot is just so that. sick then. Yeah, man, this is just... Working with the young men and women in the community to encourage them to participate in sporting activities in the constituency. So all you do, you had to run up and down in the hot sun. Yeah, that's is what that it is. See what you're saying? Yeah. That's all it is. It's nothing meaningful. Nothing to I want feel. to hear about how you're going to plan for the academics. That's right. I want to hear about, oh, you have another part over here. Mm. So sports is the main thing. The less fortunate and elderly. I will establish a care package program for the poor and destitute in the constituency. Establish a visitation program where the sick and shut in are visited on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Establish a daytime facility where the elderly can go during the day to socialize with other persons, partner with various organizations and religious institutions to have the elderly oh, take yeah. to church mm -hmm. and to participate in other activities. Isn't that what the Golden Grove Community Center was supposed to, be, right? was supposed to do? That's right. When Darrell Matthew was with the United Progressive Party, Mm -hmm. Darren Matthew was right up there with Winston William and Kyron Simon, his cousins, mm -hmm. in the UPP, the UPP branch. The organization. So, so right. how come you didn't push for these projects? Because, because no. the community center isn't even built as yet. That's right. So how come you weren't pushing for all of that? Not even it's only now that you realize that they need to have a community center in order to assist the people That's right. to look about the poor and somewhere where the poor and the, the elderly can go and get out of their house. The idea. Yes, it's just, it's just now. Only now. Only now. All right, let's go on now. <laughs> Education, training, and job opportunities. Assist with existing and prospective small business owners with training opportunities for the efficient management of their businesses. That's all like fluff. That's a political okay. give. What are you saying there? What are you going to do? You are the representative of the incumbent government, and the best you can say that you're going to do for people in the in the area. Mm. Assist, assist existing and prospective small business owners, owners with training opportunities for the efficient management of their business. Yes, what what does that mean? I don't know. You send them for a course at CXC. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Workshop. Is, workshop. is there some sort of workshop, workshop out yeah, there yeah, where you can go on things? Yeah. Say what you're saying. I don't know what that, that, that's not, that's neither here nor there. That's all like fluff. It say is. that you will partner with whatever firm or whatever um, yeah, learning right. educational body will come, come in into a community center right. to train them. I mean, you see what the, the, the catchphrase is? Everything he has mentioned here needs a building, a community center for them to organize and to assist the people. Darrell, it's not there. That's what they don't You have. and Winston and, Winston and Kyron failed fail people yes. in St. John's yes. Rural South. When, yeah. when you're right, right up in the UPP branch, branch and you used to meet over Kyron's house on a Saturday, yeah. mm -hmm. you and Winston Williams, when you are planning for the, for the greater rural, rural South, it never it happened. happened. You are weighed, weighed measured, measured, and found wanted. And now you jump ship. I know, I know you're offering the same, the same UPP, UPP garbage, garbage on a Labour Party, party ticket. Okay, that's okay. You understand? All right, let's, All right, let's move, move on, on to what he's going to do for the people. Uh, um, establish a remedial education, education program specifically in mathematics and English, 
but also in other subject areas where persons who were not able to complete these subjects can receive tutoring. All right. But what do we need, Nedwell? A community center. Okay, okay then. then. I won't even go into it. Establish a membership program for the youth in the constituency. Establish a, oh, a mentorship program for the youth in the constituency. What do you need, Nedwell? That's community center so we can meet up and do whatever they say they will want to do. Establish a job preparation training program in the constituency where persons will be trained in resume resume writing and career development. I don't know if they're going to meet on their tree. <laughs> but I believe he needs that. I, I think the refrain should be, somewhere. you need a community center, Comrade UPP. Ensure, Ensure that a computer access center is open where students and other persons can have access to computers and the internet for research, for work, and other development activities. Isn't this screaming out community center? Ah, loud and clear. And what part did you help when... They were, they were building that, that monstrosity on Golden Gold Plain Field. He was an advisor. He was, he was an advisor. He was right up in the branch. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah. was right there with them. He was advising his old buddy, Winston Williams. Establish, Establish a database of school leavers in the constituency with the view of advising them of opportunities for higher education. All right. Well, you have the database. Are we, are we going to hold the database so oh on your phone? Yeah. Are we going to meet with these people? No, we are on the tree. Establish, Establish a database, database of persons seeking employment with the view of assisting job seekers identify companies seeking employees. Mm -hmm. We're going, going to do that. Yeah, on the tree. You see, there are all these ridiculous isms and schisms he have on his pamphlet there. You know, those are just things that he put together, throw together and feel that the, the general public will grab at. Now, in opposed to our pamphlet that we put out there, you know, you see all, uh, all the things that we're saying and they cannot be disputed. The number of persons that looked at our pamphlet and saying, boy, they did, but all them sub me are true, you know. And then they start to get it, well, uh, who, who where is running for? And, and, you know, and all that, it sounds so good because they realize, they see that it is truthful. We, this is nothing that we promise, promising people that, and, and this is something that we're showing them that how they've been neglected and where we, we can come in and, and fill the slot and, and get things going the, the proper way. You know, the, where they see you operate time and time again. They see you go on the radio and you pick up on the issues. You know, you just straightforward on these things. You're not pulling no punches because of a political allegiance and all that stuff. And this is what's going on with these guys. These guys don't dispute anything because they're going to step on somebody con and all that, you know, and what it's supper that they've been singing for and yeah. all that they're not going to get and all that. And, and this is what's happening. And we have a different outlook and the way how we go about do these things are different than how these guys are, do, they are doing. Yeah. Yeah. We go out there and when you get on that radio via any one of us go on that radio we call spade a spade no matter who it hurts and and this is what that needs to be done because if you don't do that you'll be compromising the whole situation and things are not going to get any better doing that you have to go out there and look at what's ailing the society look at what ailing the community and do what it takes to to to, to fix it if you go out there and you decide to be hypocritical about this, you're not looking at fixing. You're just making some frivolous excuses of what's going on and all that. Yeah, and you yeah. care it not whether it's fixed or not. And this is what cannot happen. We cannot tolerate this much longer here because, you see, time is running short as to how the world is running right now. Uh, what is the available to people right now? Right now, land in Antigua is not even available to our children and grandchildren anymore. Everything is getting a, sh a shortage. You understand? So we have to start to put these things in place properly and make sure that we go about doing them the right way. And then things will start to fall into place. There is no such a thing as fall into place anymore. Because we make sure, and the politicians out there make sure that they do things that will just benefit them and themselves so nothing can fall into place because there's nothing for the electorate. And this is what the electorate have to realize that, look, the politician is not looking out for me. And what is giving the politicians the power that they can do that time and time again? And you see that it's the eyes have it in Parliament.
That's what's happening. You give them the overwhelming majority before they leave home. They know how, no matter how ridiculous the bill is, you, you know it's going to pass because they have the majority. Now, you need some different arguments in there. You need to you know, have a diverse way of um, amount of argument inside there so that you can get different views and uh, point of views of how and what's going on within whatever is being debated. And then the right thing can be done. But time and time again, you go and you listen to two sets of arguments. Now, one of them is from the overwhelming, the, 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 uh, the party with the overwhelming majority. And if you notice, the, when the minority, uh, when the opposition go to speak, you see all kind of hands doing this and like they're waving them, oh, but, but, you know, and things like that, because they know. They already know. Nobody going to cross no aisle in Antigua. It doesn't work that way. Well, uh, Darrell Matthew did that, but, uh, you know, uh, but normally that doesn't happen. They don't cross aisle. They don't go over. They don't vote, you know, bipartisan. You know, it's a partisan way of voting in Antigua. So you know if you have the overwhelming majority, you don't know. From the time you go in there, some of them fall asleep, as I mentioned before. They just go in there and they fall asleep. And next thing you know, time to vote. His buddy touch him, and he puts up his hands, and the eyes have it. Didn't even hear one peck of the arguments that, that went down inside there. They don't listen to opposition anyway, especially when the opposition will have three or four uh, per persons in parliament. They don't need to listen. Because it, it's not important then. They don't know that they're going their way and, and, and all that. Yeah. And this is what the people has to change with. And the people I'm asking you to consider this. Changing that way of going about doing things. Do things that is going to benefit you. And if you put a number of different persons in parliament and you're going to have a different um, amount of arguments on the same issue, that's what's going to serve your purpose well. They have to listen now. You know, you can't just go and fall asleep. You're going to have to hear, hear what members from the third and fourth and fifth party are saying mm -hmm. and, and vote accordingly. So we are until the people decide that that's the way they want to go and this is how yeah. they are going about mm -hmm. and uh, voting on election day, they are going to have some seriously hard time in Antigua. It says it's already happening. We, they promise you that all kind of things are going to happen. Two billion dollars worth of investment and all this and the either this and all that. And three and a half, three and three quarter years down the line, nothing. Absolutely nothing. But yet still, they come with this lack of performance, broken promises. And they're telling you, hey, let's do it again. And give me another five years, you see? I'm going to cut short this one by a year a little bit. So you just give me another five years. So it will be um, uh, nine years, uh, just about uh, eight years and plus. And, and I, you must do that again. And I cannot believe that you're such glutton for punishment that you will decide to make the same mistake again. Because it's a mistake. And you see it. They promise you 500 houses in five. You get less than 10% of that. They promise you water. It go lower in 14 days. You know, you, you didn't get that. They promise you that you are going to come and look how much a million dollars per year is going to be going into our economy. That didn't happen. All these different promises. None of these things happening. And they can come to you with a straight face and say, let's do it again. Straight, yeah, man, that's straight, horrible. A straight face yeah. and a handful of ham and turkey. Oh, brother, man, this is just <laughs> sickening, man. We, are, you know, we, can't, we can't go about doing this. It's hurting, too, it's hurting you see, even the unborn. Yeah, very much so. Very yeah. disrespectful. Because they're playing you for fools. You know, if a man can tell you, look, me step in you, man, and me bust your right toe. And I'm going to do it again if you jump and put your foot the same place. And you go, you put your foot. And they're saying, you're going, you're going to put your foot there now. I'll go step on the toe again. And you do that. It's fools. They're playing you for fools. Because well, yeah. yeah. you know your foot should not be there. Mm. So why are you doing the same thing over and over oh, again? Right As over. I said, even the unborn are being now saddled with, 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 with death. Death. And the all that good stuff. How generations. you mean? And all that. Yeah. And we are not even... Concerned ourselves with that. 
we need to take serious look of and 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 and, and take a, a proper grip of our lives and decide how we want it to go down the road not how this politician decide that they want it and they want to do it for us it's not they're not doing that for us anyway so yeah, yeah. so true so yeah. true listen that well um it's almost time for this program to come to an not end. At all, we no, um, not yet. We yeah, just we've, started. We've we just started. Eh? We just started. Yeah, man. yeah just buddy. That's how fast time goes well, when you're yeah, really trying, yeah. hitting the issues yes, right yes, on the yes, head. Yes, really want to um, get it out there. We'll be having this election come up in the 21st. Yes, mm. we don't have a full slate of candidates, but we have quality over quantity. Mm-hmm. A lot of these other parties, a lot of individuals, they will jump sit at a dime because it's politically expedient for them to do so mm-hmm. but i will ask any party out there right now except for the true labor party what is your position on the golden grove playing field because mm-hmm. all the political parties except true labor had a role either they started the project to build this community center and they failed or with Eustace Tico Lake right. and the ABLP, they said they will finish Promise the community finish center right. and they failed. Mm-hmm. Or you will have the leadership of the DNA who were in Pads, the UPP at the, the time initiation. when they That's came up with the idea That's to right. build fences around playing fields to make the constituents safe. In St. John's rural south, a young child was sexually assaulted on the Golden Grove playing field in 2011 by a 16-year-old boy. He's presently serving 15 years in prison. And that is a double tragedy for what happened to that little girl losing her innocence in a criminal offense like that. But the young man now, in his formative years, when he should be able to finish up his education and go and look so, work or and learn a trade or continue his academic education that's not an option for him mm-hmm. he has messed his life up so sufficiently mm-hmm. that in another 10 to 15 years mm-hmm. he'll be walking the streets of st john's and even so more so the constituency of st john's rural right. south mm-hmm. they will be letting him loose on the public what is the upp the ablp and the leaders of the DNA saying about this failed policy, which they were a part of and supported when they were with the UPP. Mm-hmm. Nobody is dealing with these issues. Only the true Labour Party is bringing it to you hard and fast and calling a spade a spade. Yes, Nedra, you that's have always. the outro. Yes, all yes. Yours. as mentioned, you know, uh, that's why I, I keep on saying, you know, that the, our representative that we put up for Rural South is a representative that go out there and call spade to spade all the time. He goes on the radio station, you hear how he attacked these issues. And this is the sort of representation that you need. And we put up this guy to that so because we know that he can serve your purpose well. He's capable of representing you. There's no two ways about that he represents people just about every day in the court of law and all that and not to mention that that the green politics he know to legislate for you and all that good stuff so why would you want to choose a rookie that comes and then going to be trying to learn in on the job is going to be an ojt stuff on the job training business this is not going to serve your purpose we don't have that time Mm-hmm. We don't have no time to be training person and say after after we done training for ten years that he be all right and he can represent us after that. No, you want somebody that will give you instant representation and this is what true labor is offering you and this is what we promise you. If true labor ever get in power, your life will change drastically. There will be a blip for the better. Oh yes, because we are not into this handout thing. And then what I notice is competing right now, it is upliftment versus handing out. You see, and this is a dreadful thing. When the politicians train you to love handout and all that, the life in all your society just deteriorates. And this is what is a deteriorating process. That's how people are living, you know. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, general public, I'm asking you again. This is the moment of truth. You are now in the valley of decision, and you have to make that decision wisely. 
You may not get that opportunity again. That's another possibility. All this. And make hay while the sun shines. You notice how many quotations I'm throwing at you. These are the quotations that will make your life better. These are the quotations where you can help yourself to make your life better. And it's so that one day, that one day when you have that power in your hand, you use it wisely. And ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, down the road, you will smile at what you do because it's going to benefit you tremendously. Well, it's that time of day, ladies and gentlemen. It's getting there, and I think um, we are going to even take our that, leave at this yes. time, even though that we are week. so hesitant um, in doing it. Uh, probably next week will be our final episode yeah, until after the, the, the elections, election, because we're right. going to be so busy. Absolutely. But as soon as the 21st of uh, March is over with, yeah. We'll have our episodes coming up. We probably Absolutely. have an early one in the week or so on, yeah, just to that. fill in on our post-election oh, sure. results Absolutely. and where we go from there, mm-hmm. win, lose, or draw. Oh, Thank you for listening, and, and bye for now. Take bye. Care. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Ain't no use in diving. What's the use of diving? Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. The buzzer told the monkey, you are choking me. Release your hold and I will set you free. The monkey looked the buzzer right dead in the eye and said, your story so touching, it sounds just like a lie. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and stay right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Choking me, release your hold, and I will set you free. The monkey looked the buzzard right dead in the eye and said, Your story's so touching, it sounds just like a lie. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and stay right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and stay right. Straighten up and fly right Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your